Alrighty, hello, and welcome to another one of Grim Dark Skies. Not this point. We don't even have a set intro yet. But anyways, so today I want to go over callouts, uh, and not just the callouts that you might find on a map, but callouts as they're actually called by real people and real pickup groups. So the common callouts that you can use with anybody, and they'll understand what you mean, because most of the time when I give callouts, people understand what I mean if they have any kind of map knowledge whatsoever. So we're going to go through the entire outside of the mall and then the inside of the mall with uh, each of the stores individually, including the center, Ollie, Idea, all that. And I'm going to list the important things to know and not so much the not important things to know. There's quite a lot of stores in Interchange and only half of them are actually relevant to PvP callouts and identifying and such and such and such. So we'll start with the outside. We, of course, have here... Emercom checkpoint and uh, pretty straightforward. Some people say Emercom checkpoint, they call these tents. Makes sense. Over here, we have one of many. There's a few places that could be defined as such, but wall break because there's a break in the wall over there. And we'll go over and just check that out real quick. All right, so as you can see, there's pathways through the walls here, and this wall's fallen over, which is why. Some people call it wall break, but a lot of people won't have a, a set name for that. But say you spawn an Emercom and you're running towards the ramp and you look right, you see a guy, you'd want to say something like, I see an enemy over by the wall break. And that's one way that you would say, instead of just by the wall, you know, it kind of gives an identifier. Now, besides that, another identifying call out that you are going to end up probably needing to use in this situation would be ramps. There's a left ramp and a right ramp, but typically... As soon as you say ramp, people know where to look. They look up here or over there. And then there's also, like, I call this ramp parking lot, but I've never had to give a call out for that location. Now, beyond that, a lot of common traffic areas that you encounter people are right here along the blue wall. And this blue wall goes all the way from Emercom over to uh, Scav Camp. So pretty much if anyone says enemy by blue wall, you're going to be looking over here. Now, let's go around the outside a little bit more. So here we've reached this point. Nobody ever references this area because rarely anybody goes to loot there. If you had to say something over there, I'd say across the road by the cargo containers. And that kind of, I mean, look, what else is that, right? No, across the road by the cargo containers is what I would call that if I had to give a call out for that location. So let's keep running along the blue wall here. So right around here, we're in heavy secret stash territory. There's a secret stash right here in between the trees. And there's another one over there and a couple more over there. So if you were to encounter someone here and they're not by the blue wall, I would recommend saying something like he's in between us and the stash. And you could use a nearby stash or far stash. And that's just a little bit better than saying he's by the tree over there. As you can tell, that would be a little bit confusing. But beyond that, we do have a pretty important landmark here. This whole complex area here could be identified by the callout 21 Weapon Safe or 21 WS. And the reason being is that there's actually a locked container here that requires a key card you can get off the flea market. I believe you can still buy it off the flea market called 21 Weapon Safe. It's the, one of the two key cards on this map. The other one is 11 SR. And that is located right here. Use this little jump up. Get up here, up here, oh my god, I got baby legs right here, this is where you would swipe it, so oftentimes, either early on in the raid or later in the raid, sometimes people come to loot this and it's it requires power at the power station beyond, which we'll reach in a second, but you always want to watch out for people here, using this as a sniping location, and there's also a couple other locations that people could be. This is one of them. A lot of people will come up here and snipe stash runners or snipe people running across the parking lot early like this or going into the mall early. But if you were to see an enemy in here, I would just refer to it as he's at 21 weapon safe. And then you could say a reference like on top of the blue container, on top of the green, on top of the red uh, to narrow it down a little bit more. And it's also possible to get up on top of that crane, but I'm not going to bother. Alrighty, so here we've reached the highway. This highway is the main highway on the railway exfil side that leads over to Scav Camp, which is that area over there. And once again, there's not really any defining features. 
but there's a couple things you could use here first of all just saying there's an enemy on the highway you know far left near the middle towards scav camp would be a couple ways of identifying targets here or you could say by the railway cars by the truck behind the portable by the container stuff like that so this is just basically called highway here we have another location called big sign i guess you could call it but there's two of them so honestly it's a pretty bad call out um unless there's someone inside of it you can actually go through a door at the bottom and get up top well you get about there and there's another door that you can't open but i would just say if you see a target in there call them call it big sign and the, since there's only one on each side of the mall the other one's like way over there people will know where to look Alrighty, now here we have scav camp and that's what it's actually called on the map there's so much stuff going on in here that narrowing down the scav camp would be better done with landmarks than with any kind of hard set call out so all behind tan tent in between the green tents behind the fuel truck behind the containers by the crane in the containers etc etc you're gonna have to adapt to the situation on that one basically and then outside of scav camp we have uh these ditches that are common traffic areas and i just call them you know there's a guy in the second ditch by scav camp if i needed to say something or closest ditch by scav camp say we were getting assaulted in here not a lot of people traffic through here though there are a few quests here so many of these outside call outs are pretty rare to use because um most of the most of the most of the fighting's done inside, right? So, but it's good to know them anyways, because you are going to have to face combat occasionally, either running in or trying to leave. All right, now we have a couple objectives over here. Obviously, we have the railway extract, and that's basically the only defining factor over there. There's some rubble over there, but all these other small callouts are going to be things that you just see with visual reference in the moment more so than things you're going to memorize by heart if you have special names for those those are things you're going to want to come up with with your squad personally on a more individual level but here we have railway we have the bridge there's a stash under there so you usually encounter people under there so if there's a person under there typically people just say underneath the bridge and then in between here and railway there's like a construction area and that's typically a call out that people use as a reference when they're telling you about the pvp they got into so this whole area would be considered construction area from uh, underneath the bridge over to the railway extract but here we have a place that's pretty unique on the map uh never really seen a pvp here but there is a secret stash over there and there's one over there and there's one by the bridge so we do have a lot of traffic through this area and of course as you can see it's a go-kart track so most people call this go-kart track but some people call it golf course um i would say either one and most people would know but obviously it's a go-kart track so if you want to be clear and then one of the defining features of this area is this ambulance and uh a lot of people come near this ambulance for some reason so you might want to remember that there's ambulance here so go-kart track ambulance are probably going to be two relevant things for you to use all right so here we have another big sign but once you're by one big sign, you can't see the other one. So calling it big sign is good enough. All right, now we come to a major point of PvP on this map, the power station. The power station is down the road from Evercom checkpoint and down the road from railway, railway. So it's kind of forming a V in between the two extraction points. And it's also a pretty typical spawn point at the beginning of the match, as well as having the power lever in here which is uh, a map objective that almost everybody hits. So it's really important to know all the layouts of this area really well, because either coming or going, you probably are gonna fight here eventually. So first of all, we have the fuel truck. Everybody knows about this truck because it's involved in a lot of missions, quite a few marking missions with all the trucks. So fuel truck in the parking lot, and then we have power station itself. Power station has three floors actually, if you wanna look at it that way. So we have the power station office because it has the computers and the desks and stuff so they call us the office and then we have power station bathroom because there's a bathroom in here then there's the power station button that you can activate for the power i'm not going to flip it so we don't get noise later and then we have the main area of the, of the power of the uh, power station right and if we go out here we also have um wrong stairs we also have the roof and this is important to know because the second floor and the, and the roof are common sniping locations for a lot of people. 
especially because you have clear sight lines to both major extractions. So a lot of people try to do shooter board in heaven here, as well as you can hide visually for anyone coming to extract here. It's a pretty strong position that some people take advantage of. But say you're running from Emercom down this road, you see someone here and your team doesn't see him. You'd want to say power station, second floor windows, sniper, power station roof, sniper, or power station guy running in parking lot in front of the fuel truck, etc., etc., to give some examples. This is also a pretty trafficked area because there is a secret stash here as well, right here. So you, you want to make sure to check over this area. And of course, there's a pipe here. You could call that yellow pipe. Oh, there's a guy looting stash by yellow pipe, etc., etc. And then, of course, the other landmarks we have here, the bridge car extraction. Um, nothing else over here, but one, one area that you will get into a lot of contact is going to be in this back area here, either pushing through or leaving. Commonly, you'll see people coming from here. There's a stash on the other side of that blue fence, and then there's some toolboxes in here. So a couple of things that I would use as reference points to tell people where they are. Say we're at bridge car extraction, and I'm with the team, and I see a guy coming down. I say there's a guy running straight left along the wall past the toolbox, past the toolbox towards us. Uh, squad or two or whatever, right? Because even just saying the word toolbox is enough for an experienced player to know what you're talking about because right here, there's a toolbox here and there's a weapon right there, but a toolbox here and anybody that knows interchange is going to know that they're there. So it's, it's not too many defining markings besides the wall or you can say, hey, there's a guy uh, left side peeking the toolbox or there's a guy behind the toolbox building and your teammates is going to know to look in this exact area here. So that's a good way to break up this line of travel about halfway. And then beyond that, see, you saw him further or he was running away. Oh, there's a guy running towards the blue fence towards a stash. Because over here is a stash commonly looted right here. So we come back over here from the stash by the blue fence towards toolboxes, towards bridge car extraction, towards power station, which has first floor, second floor with windows or roof. And on the side of that is the parking lot with the fuel truck. And that's all you really need as reference points in this area. And then of course, coming over here, we once again have a ramp. Left side, right side ramp is an easy way to identify which location is which. And then let's head to our last spot over by Emercom. All right, running over towards Emercom, we have a couple landmarks. So if you were to run from power station this way, we have the fuel truck here, which is also part of missions. And, you know, oh, I see a guy. He's behind the fuel truck is a way to identify that. But you will also commonly run into traffic here because this is actually a no backpack extract. And you can just call that no backpack. Its real name is hole in the fence, but no hole in the fence extract requires no backpack. So when you're pressured in the moment, you can just say no backpack and I know exactly what you're talking about. All right, so to get started on the inside of the mall, we're going to start on idea first. You can tell which one is idea because it's blue and Ollie is green and ultra is just ultra. It's very obvious when you're ultra, you're in the middle of it all and you're not in blue or green. So going into idea, we have a couple objectives first, which are commonly trafficked. We have the underground area. So underground glass doors could be a way to identify that. And then we have here a locked medical area that I would just call first floor medical. Now, as a new player, you probably think callouts are very complicated. They're not very complicated. All you need to do is give a person with enough map knowledge to understand you enough information about where the target is to get eyes on it. And there's certain things on the map that are very identifiable that can be as simple as one word or two word to really get the message across. And that's what you really want your call-outs to be. You want your call-outs to be short and concise to prevent cluttering comms. You don't want to say, there's a guy over there. He's running up the middle of the stairs in between the two escalators up to the sandbags. You want to say, there's a guy on escalators. There's only two escalators here, except for over there, which we'll get to. But you want to keep things short and simple. So just look at an objective or look at where the target is. See two points of reference that are kind of unique to his position and try to call that out. So some of these callouts I give you are going to be pretty simple, and it's for that reason. But it will get the message across. So here we have escalators. And from escalators, we have a common sniping area. We have here second floor glass is a simple way to call that. Now starting from left to right, we have here cash registers, hole in the wall. And here is a very, very common call you're going to use a lot because a lot of PvP goes down here. We have idea computer office. Everyone's going to know what you mean when you say idea computer office. Commonly has GPU spawns here. 
so like I said, a lot of traffic. And coming out of the back of Idea Computer Office, we have here a spawn, a lion spawn that's commonly checked. So a lot of people will hide in these couches and stuff behind the drapes. So say that, you know, you're walking down this hallway and you come over here and you're church and you see a guy. Oh, there's a guy by lion spawn, right? That way you don't have to say there's a guy right of the Idea Computer Office behind the drapes. That's the way that I mean, like we can cut things down. Besides that, all the way back from computer is what I call that. But another way to call that is generator. There's a guy back by generator because of this thing. There's only one of those in this area. And then here we have the back hallway that reaches to the other side of idea. Okay. All right, so over here in the front of uh, idea over by escalators, we have lockers. These are very rarely traveled. Uh, this whole area over here is pretty rarely traveled, but we have lockers. Uh, we have room by lockers. This is very rarely anything you'll have to say. I rarely see anybody use these to fight out of because it's a dead end, dead end over there. And then we have playground is what you could call it because it's like a children's playground. A lot of people will use this as cover to fight. So escalators, second floor glass, lockers, playground, cash registers, hole in the wall, idea computer office, etc, etc. All right, now we come over here. We have escalators. Now, if you're over on this part of the mall, just say near escalators, you know, escalators close to us, or you could call that one main escalator. And then, you know, but basically if you're in this area and you're referencing escalators, you're going to want to reference this. But anyways, that's another call out that's pretty rarely used. Now, over here, no one, you never really ever see it would come down this way, but I would just call this, uh, hallway. Hallway left by red light, right? These are things you will so rarely have to say. But here we get, um, into the middle of the mall, and we really do start to get into some of the more important callouts, because here is the main area of the PvP. So, here we have Trend. Trend is involved in a quest, and this is a common intersection point for PvP, so Trend is a common call out and all these call outs for the stores the stores have the names on them which what makes them so frequently used and so important to know so we have trend we have trend escalators and these are call outs you really need to remember because um this is a common gpu route like here spawns gpus and inside here can spawn gpus so these call outs are going to be used a lot so we have here uh let me remember what it is. TTS, thank you. So TTS. Uh, yeah. And across from TTS, Emercom, medical unit. And across from that, Costin. And then to the left of that, bookstore. So obviously no one can read that except non-Americans. But this is a common place that you're going to fight. So say we see someone coming down this hallway and there's some call outs that you could help to aid their positioning over there but if we were looting TTS and I come out I see a guy I would want to say something like oh there's a guy over there down the hallway by Costin to the right towards the middle or something like that or oh I see a guy he's in the middle of Emercom medical unit I see a guy he's running left to right towards trend etc etc there's a guy trying to hop into TTS etc etc now back this way we have a couple callouts that are frequently traveled. We have here Bizarro. Bizarro, you know why it's called Bizarro? And this is something I really love about this game. It's so cool. So it's called Bizarro, right? You're like, what is it? There's no magic items in here. But if you look at this, the floor is wood, right? Do you notice anything weird about this room? Well, if you guess that the floor is wood, but it doesn't make any wood sounds, you'd be correct. It's the only place in the game that has wood on the floor that doesn't make wood sounds. It just makes normal walking sounds. Bizarro! Alright, but going down the street from Bizarro and Costin, we have here uh, these tents. And there's not really any common agreed about callouts for these, but most people just say, ah, oh, he's in the middle by tents. Because in the whole area of the middle, these are the only tents. So from there, you'd want to narrow it down. He's in the far right tent that goes through the middle. Or he's in the medical tent because he in here typically spawns medical items and such. Like, for example, there's painkillers. 
So that's the way to break it down. And then over here is a cafe. So you could say something like, right of the tents in the cafe. But if it's in here, your teammates should be able to hear him because this ain't Bizarro, right? Now, here is Pretty Lights, but no one knows the name of this store. And what people typically call this is uh, Dark Glass. The reason being that it has this dark windows and stuff that people typically break and use as a thoroughfare for flanking maneuvers. So he's in Dark Light Store is literally what some people are going to expect you to understand. Uh, pretty uncommon to find PvP in there, but if someone says Dark Lights, maybe they're referencing that. Pretty hard to get that across, but hopefully they'll be shooting and stuff. Alright, now we have Generic Shop. Generic is easy to remember because it's like a military surplus kind of space, and it has the APC in it. Uh, this is also a common quest location. It's one of the locations that Killa used to spawn. So, people reference that a lot and they fight out of that a lot. It also, uh, that's where you place the gold chains for, I think, Ragman or something. And same with in here. I actually forget the name of this store. Avocado. Alright, so that's Avocado, which is right across the way from Rasmussen. And you'll get into a bit of PvP here because people have to quest to put uh, chains and stuff or whatever on those garbage piles. As uh, you have to place them there. But Rasmussen is an extremely important call out to know because GPU spawn in here a lot and this is usually one of the main center hubs for PvP at the beginning of the raid. So beyond that we uh, we'll get to the second floor in a bit but here we have Killa Hole is what people call this because back in the day when Killa had static spawns he would either spawn over there in generic or he would spawn over here or over here or over there in the middle of the hallway. So people call this Killa Hole because typically what you do is you would run up at the start of the raid and you'd instantly start fighting Killa. He'd try to jump you. So we'll go through the middle of the mall real quick back towards Emercom, TTS, Costin, and Library or Bookstore or whatever. And go through the callouts here. So here we have Brutal, which is another quest location. People have a quest to place a hidden camera there and lots of PvP there. And Brutal is straight across from Kiba. And people just call Kiba Kiba. Now reaching the middle of the store, we have escalators, once again. And since there's so many escalators, there's three sets, most of the time people just call out escalators. Um, with the difference being this one, which is fire barrel escalator, because there's a fire barrel at the top, which is also a call out for the second floor. So that's one way, you know, you could say fire, bar fire barrel escalator, middle escalator, or front of the store escalator or Big Glass Escalator, because this callout in the front of the store on second floor is called Big Glass. Like I said, we'll get to that. Now on the other side of uh, Middle Escalator and Fire Barrel Escalator, we have here Mantis. Mantis has a lot of medical supplies and LEDX and Defibrillator spawns inside, so commonly looted. And across from Mantis, we have German. I wish I'd brought a flashlight, guys. Sorry. But German has uh, possible GPU spawns in here as well. So it's on a lot of people's route. So Mantis, which is across from German, is right next to Voyage. No one ever talks about this store. Don't worry about it. Dead serious. Uh, it's pretty subpar on the loot. Uh, if you need to call out that position, just say next to German. Because everyone knows what German is. Or he's in the jacket store across from Mantis. Would be another way to say it. Now here we have National. National is a good one to know. Because a lot of people rotate through national like this to get to the uh, the main escalators on the first floor going down, especially scavs and stuff. And then we have uh, Viking is what this one's called, but not as commonly used. Uh, people know the national better, so I would say if someone's in here, just say across from national. Clothing store across from national. And then going towards Texo, you know, of course we have main escalators main escalators to the front door or whatever. Uh, we have Telespot. No one ever references this. We have Sports. Sports is commonly used to run away in and for flanking maneuvers by people fighting out of Rasmussen and Texo. So Sports is a good one to know. Here we have Revise. No one references that. And then another important one to know is Adic. Adic is another way that people go usually from Ras or Texo through the middle of the mall or when they check for Killa. So Adic, Sports, Rasmussen, Avocado, and then Texo. Okay. So 
So over here, not only do we have Texo, but we have Furniture. And this is called Furniture because the name is illegible to Americans. But you can see why it's called Furniture because of all the furniture. Very easy to understand. One of the only furniture-only stores in the mall. Straight across from Texo. A very, very common, like number one commonly looted spot in the beginning of the raid for graphics cards as well. And then over here on the other side, we have a store that's never referenced. And we have this call, store called Yushka, which is never called that. People just call this dark room, basically, or dark box room. Uh, people hide in here sometimes. I would just say he's in the dark store next to Texo, and people experienced will know what you mean. We also have here top brand, which is an easy one to remember, but not important because very, very infrequently used. All right, so now going upstairs from here. Alrighty, we're upstairs now. Tech light, a very, very important, critical one to know. So tech light is straight across from Ultra Medical, which is this place. And that's the place that needs the expensive key with the power to be turned on. So these two spots are critical to know. Tech light or Ultra Medical. And then if you're engaged in PvP in this area, there's some other important call to know to call out references and flanks. So here we have Dark Tech Store because it's just like tech light or like texo basically and sometimes it spawns technical loot but it has no lighting ever so people just call this dark tech because people will commonly ambush or fight out of here and then across from dark tech we have papillon papillon is a very important uh, call out to know because typically people pushing from main hallway by big glass will push down main hallway over to papillon and start using this as cover to assault tech light and ultra med so definitely try to remember that one and then sticking to this side of the quadrant we have here arcade arcade is called it for obvious reasons once you step in we have a lot of old-fashioned arcade machines literally and uh those special little coin operated cars and stuff so arcade is a common route of travel as well and we'll get to over there in a second, but to finish off this sec this sector, we have uh, Urban. Now, Urban is very important to know because a lot of people will push up also from this hallway towards Ultra Med and Tech Light, and they'll pass by here. And if you say you're with the squad over here by Tech Light, and you see an enemy over there, you'd want to say, I see a team of two moving up from Papillon. Or to give a better direction of someone coming the other way, Instead of just saying, I see a guy moving up the hallway, you either say, I see a guy moving up from Papillon, or I see a guy moving up from Urban. Because those are the two distinguishing stores that have separate points, and that way your teammate is going to know exactly what side you're talking about. And it's pretty much as simple as that. We have here, uh, let's see, Fashion Store. Yeah. If, if there's a guy in there, you'd want to say, across from Urban in the clothing store. Okay. But an another important one to know, the last one in this area, is this hallway right here this is called secret hallway because it's a very very common call out that you'll use because a lot of people use this staircase secret staircase to rotate and i'll show you why here so here we have uh you could call this secret computer room but why this is so important is because people typically rotate from Texo up to Tech Light from here, as well as over here from the middle of the mall. But if you, we look out these other side doors here, we will notice that they lead directly to Texo. So you could go from first floor Texo, and instead of taking the main escalator, you could come through here, go up the stairs in the computer room, and end up in the other secret hallway. So people reference this as secret hallway as well. It just depends on what floor you're on. If you're on first floor, you're talking about this secret hallway, which is right by furniture. Or you could even call these secret escalators because this is secret hallway to people that know callouts. And then you take computer room over there, up secret stairs. And then if we were on second floor, they would once again be in secret hallway. So starting back by arcade, we have here a store that really has no name. Oh, it's Figaro. Okay, just kidding. So, Figaro is a callout that not a lot of people will use. Most people just say, uh, 
the, <laughs> the store across from Arcade, but Fragaro would be a good name to use, but I don't expect a lot of people to understand that. Fragaro is a clothing store that's always dark as well, so you could say the dark clothing store. But uh, most of the time when you meet someone in here, it's an ambush. So Now here's an important couple ones to know, two very important ones to know. First of all, we have a hexagon over here. And then on the other side of the mall, there's another hexagon that we can't see yet, but we'll get to. So this one is called Red Hexagon. The reason being that the surrounding area around it has red on it. All the areas are red except for Figaro, which is, you know, dark. But this is a common area where people will be sniping down and more so when Killa used to spawn there. It used to be a way to kill Killa, but now a lot of people will snipe down at Rasmussen, Adic, the main hallway, uh, Avocado, G Generic, etc. And Red Hex is important to know. Now beyond that we have here what people call Papa John's because it kind of looks like the Papa John's and it's a pizza shop but it's obviously not named that probably. But Papa John's is important to remember because you may meet a lot of people here because this is where you would swipe the, uh, oh, wait, just kidding. This is not where you swipe it. This is not where you swipe it. But this is where you run through to get to where you swipe 11 safe room key card. So Papa John's down the hall from Techlight and Arcade, a very common call out that people know. And you meet a lot of people traveling through here. Uh, forget about my mistake because here we go so we go through papa john's and we reach a very important call out called fire barrel and the reason that you want to know fire barrel uh and it's a little bit easier than calling it generator is because a lot of people will come here and snipe from the top of the escalators top of fire barrel escalators towards middle escalators and the whole middle of the store so you'll see a lot of people posted up here and then over here we have subway this explains itself and Jacobs and Jacobs, that's another common one that people reference, but that's one's easy to remember because, uh, you know, it has a name on it. But coming over here, this is an important one to know, and the one I thought I was referencing earlier, we have Burger Shot, Burger Spot, whatever you want to call it. Maybe that's what it says, but this is called Burger Shot, Burger Spot, oh, okay, that's why they call it that, okay, Burger Spot, so it is actually called that. And this is where you swipe the 11S R key. And people call it Burger Spot instead of 11SR all the time. So don't call it that, call it Burger Spot. Now, going out of Burger Spot, we end up at the other hexagon. And if we remember correctly, the other hexagon over by Arcade is Red Hexagon. This one is called Blue Hexagon because of the lighting and because of the surrounding areas being blue more so than red. Uh, that stuff's yellow, but you know, obviously we have the blue lights lighting up the hexagon. So blue hexagon, another common sniping area where you can snipe Embercom, TTS, Boston, or over here, uh, bookstore, right? This, uh, this is not very commonly referenced and not worth worrying about. Mostly just say he's in the dark store by blue hex. And coming over here, we find ourselves back at trend escalators now there's the escalators right here that lead us back down to the trend store by idea you can see it right there trend but also just like secret store or secret stairs we have another hallway down this way that leads to some stairs people don't really call that anything if i had to call it anything i'd call it he's going towards the staircase by trend um that way, hopefully, the guy really knows the map, so he knows, oh, he's not going towards the escalators, he's going towards the stairs. But that's something that you will rarely have to say, if ever, like most of these. Now, let's go towards the middle of the mall. Going through these stores, all these stores are not really worth referencing. If I had to reference anything around here, I would say, uh, you know, he's in the main hallway, basically. Uh towards trend or towards big glass because that's a call out for here so you know if, if we're pushing this way i see oh i see an enemy by tech light oh i see an enemy in papillon he's in the hallway in between papillon and the intersection or a couple call outs over here that are used are burger house starbucks and sushi mainly more so than the burger house will be sushi and Starbucks. So these are pretty easy to remember once you get a good look at them. They both have the names on them. But the reason that these are important 
is because they contain hallways in them that a lot of people use for rotations to get through without exposing themselves in the middle of the hallway. And this one leads right towards Arcade. And the other one leads right towards the intersection over by Blue Hexagon. But the most important one to remember in this area is Big Glass, Starbucks, Sushi. And a lot of people will fight out of these stores as well. So if you're getting shot at, oh, there's a guy in Sushi, there's a guy in Starbucks, there's a guy by the Big Glass. And a lot of people will snipe from here as well. If you're outside the mall, you'd want to call this Big, block, big Glass as well. Oh, there's a guy at Big Glass. And people will know to look at the second floor typically, not the first floor, because the first floor doesn't have nearly as many sniping angles as the second. And then lastly, coming through the middle of the second floor, we have sandbags. These are the main collection of sandbags in the mall. So if we were passing from Papillon to Big Glass and I looked right and saw a guy here, I'd say there's a guy in the middle escalator by sandbags. Man, know exactly where to look. Okay, there's a guy. He's running away right to left from sandbags to Jacob and Jacob. He's inside Jacob and Jacob now. That's an example of how. Or there's a guy. He just came out of Jacob and Jacob. He's headed towards Sushi. An example of how to reference these points. Alrighty, now let's go over to Ollie. Alright, coming over to Ollie, we have a lot of callouts right here in this, the main room. So we have sandbags by escalators, self explanatory. We have computer rooms over there because there's many computer rooms that are quest related. We have cash registers, and then we have escalators now of course there's two escalators so you call this main escalator you call that escalators or escalators on the left or whatever um not gonna need to reference that a lot usually uh usually when you see someone over here they are already up the escalator and they're running along here over here using this as cover and you just say there's a guy uh, to our left by the escalators or by behind the shelf or by the forklift etc etc now, passing by the cash registers and passing by the computer offices on the right, we have here several cubicles here. Now, the cubicles aren't really identified individually, but I would just say there's a guy in the cubicle, and your teammates should know enough off that to check the closest cubicle. Because most of the time, like how you're about to see here in a second, the cubicles are not visible from one another. So if we were here, and you said, oh, there's a guy in the cubicle, I'm not going to go, oh, shit, really? I'm going to go, bam, you know, okay, he's in there. But more importantly, or another way you could reference this is right here, we have uh, these big shelves. And these are called uh, fallen shelves, drop shelves, big shelves, etc., etc. This is a common looting area for a lot of people. So basically just, you know, oh, he's in the back by the shelves is enough of a way to reference this location. And over here is a door leading to the computer offices. And then back in the back of the store, we have, you know, this whole dark section. And there's not really a common call out for um, this area, but I would just say the dark area. He's in the dark, dark hallway in Ollie. So there's an enemy. He's running away from big shells over in the dark hallway is a way that people would understand what you mean. Now, there's a couple other identifying factors around here, like this fountain and stuff. You're never going to be referencing these points except in an adaptive way because to see someone in a location like this is so rare. Most of the time they're running along the back here. They're in the big shelves looting. They're in the cubicles looting. They're going towards a computer room looting. And that's something you'd want to say, oh, he's running from the fountain towards the dark hallway and something like that. But dark hallway, computer, and cubicles and stuff are the main ones you're going to be using in this area. Now over here we have more shelves that are commonly looted, but they're not, they don't really have any identifying features. So if you're in this area, I would just call these shelves. Oh, he's in the back corner by shelves, and that'll be enough of a reference, because once again, we can't see the previous shelf reference from this location. Now over here we have a big warehouse area. There's a lot of traffic that comes through here too, but there's, uh, there's a complex way to refer to this now i would say oh i see a guy he's in the big break on the other side by the in the warehouse kind of area right it's like he's through he's in the big lit warehouse area because this is dark too you can reference it that way he's in the lit warehouse area but that's another specific one i wouldn't worry about too much but another thing you could say is he's in the warehouse area by computer rooms because computer rooms is an important one to know because over here 
this is a very very common loot area for people looking for gpus all these doors in this hallway in this kind of a square pattern have these computer rooms in them with many pc blocks in them so he's in all the computer rooms you know left side right side and warehouse area by computer rooms makes a little more sense now maybe more so than if you were to call it that uh if you said warehouse area by computer area and you were talking about this no one would reference what you mean uh, but you could say, if you wanted to call out from here to here, you could say warehouse area towards cubicles. Because there is, in fact, a cubicle just right over here. Alright, and that pretty much does it for Ollie. So let's go check out Goshen. So for Goshen, this is uh, the back connecting hallway that connects Idea to Ollie and to the main grocery store area of the map. But uh, most of the time, when referencing stuff in here, we're going to be calling this hallway Tool Hallway. You can call these cargo containers, say, oh, there's a guy over by cargo containers. And now he's running down the Tool Hallway. People would understand what that means because typically here is a lot of tool loot. I brought a flashlight this time. We had to reset the rate. I brought a flashlight. So here we can light up things a little better. So Tool Hallway would be a good enough reference for here. And then here, when we get to the middle, another way to distinguish this would be uh, sandbag area in the middle is literally is what people typically will say or buy trucks buy sandbags etc this is a little path that goes from above ground to the underground uh, and we're not going to cover the underground today because the underground really doesn't have any specific call outs because not a lot of squads spend time down there but uh, he's at the wooden jump up because at this point when you get to about this point you have to jump up would be a way to distinguish that from here so you could call, oh, he ran down tool hallway to middle sandbags. And he's cutting right to wood jump up is a way that you could track someone's movement with call outs through here. And then even all the way over to here to the end of this, we would call this tool hallway too. But I'd probably reference it as he's in the idea side because that's idea over there or power station because power station is actually over here. He's in the tool hallway towards power station past sandbags. He's in the tool hallway past sandbags towards Ollie would be a couple ways to distinguish this, even though we're using the same callouts for two different areas. But now coming into the middle of the mall, we have what people call here middle of Goshan, because we're literally in the middle of Goshan. And from here, a couple ways to identify it, we have this campfire is what people call this bonfire, etc, etc. It's the only fire in the mall, obvious what you're talking about. And from campfire, we go over here, and this whole area of the mall on this side is pretty infrequently traveled. But if we come over here, there's a couple key area objectives that people usually route to. So here we have Bitcoin lockers, and that's a very, very important one to remember, Bitcoin lockers, because Bitcoin spawn here. Durr. And a lot of people check them, and there's a lot of PvP going down here. So campfire middle of Goshan and then here we have tents leading to the middle of the mall Bitcoin and then right here is actually secret hallway so if you want to say oh there's a guy running from Bitcoin lockers to secret and then if we look here again just as a visual reminder here's secret stairs going up to tech light and through here would be a door going to Texa so a very very common reference point that you can use with that Alrighty, so another key objective of Goshan that a lot of people go to is over here, and people just call this the food area, the food shelves, etc. The grocery store part of the map, because here we get tons and tons of food items that are commonly hit up for people doing food related quests. So if you say the food area of Goshan, people will know what you're talking about. Very simple. Goshan is very simple. We got food area, middle of Goshan, campfire. Bitcoin lockers, secret. And then beyond that, we have uh, some more computer rooms over here. And the way to differentiate this from the secret side is just to say computer rooms. Because unless you specifically say secret, which also has no computers, people are gonna understand what you mean by computer room hallway or something like that. Or you kind of have to mix in your total map knowledge to really get a clear picture sometimes. But typically just saying, you know, uh, he's in the computer room area by food. He's going to the computer hallway by foods. That's gonna get the message across. And then lastly here in the front of the mall by tents, we have another escalator 
And you could just very simply call that escalator by tens. But all right, guys, that'll sum it up. Hopefully you guys learned something and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.